the sun, our ultimate source of life and energy. It's estimated that every hour enough solar energy reaches the Earth's surface to power the entire planet for a year. Today, many Massachusetts residents are investing in solar, and for a wide range of reasons. Every bit of the electricity that's produced is either we're using it or we're sending it back to Instar. We're reducing our carbon footprint from this. My wife and I um, have wanted to uh, you know, take the right steps for the planet. We need to get off oil. It's very important for us not to be dependent on oil, and we have the means to do it. Massachusetts, like the other New England and Northeast states, uh, is at the end of the energy pipeline, the natural gas pipeline. We don't have the type of indigenous fuel sources that other states can benefit from. And so it's important for us to look at a diversified uh, fuel strategy and renewable energy along with other fuel sources are important for Massachusetts energy needs. Uh, in addition, uh, Massachusetts has uh, very strong greenhouse gas reduction goals, environmental goals, and so renewable energy and solar PV as a technology helps us meet our overall goals. They work year-round. They're um, actually pretty productive in the spring and in the fall, even though it's colder because the transistors, from what I understand, actually function better in the cooler weather than they do in the warmer weather. The solar panels work more efficiently when they're colder. They have what's called a negative temperature coefficient. That just means on hot, sunny days, they're less efficient, and on cold, sunny days, they're more efficient. Today, so far, we've produced 5.25 kilowatt hours of electricity, and it's, what, only uh, uh, 1140 or so. So we're doing pretty well. If you look at the um, chart below, you can see this is yesterday, as it started to get later in the day, um, last night, and now the panels are beginning to produce again. So if I look at any point on the uh, line, for example, that's 8.10 in the morning. Uh, and if I look up here, it's just about now. Well, actually, it's, it's a half an hour behind. So I can follow the production of my electricity. But what makes a home a good candidate for solar panels? And what factors should be taken into consideration? Uh, this house has a great southern exposure, it has very little shading, and it's at the optimal angle, which is around 35 to 40 degrees. It makes it great for solar. And so I'm looking at the surrounding buildings and trees and what might shade uh, the, the roof, if it's shaded at all. I'm also looking at the access to the roof, you know, because a uh, big part of the job is the physical part of putting the panels up there and how, how are we going to get up and do that? How are we going to stage the job? I got it. Where will we, you know, have the electric run down to the basement? Um, so there's, there's roof work, there's examining the structure of the rafters, make sure uh, the, the building is structurally sufficient to put solar panels on. Then you also take a look at uh, the utility room, where the electric panel is. What kind of service does the house have? Um, are there open breakers in the electrical pa electric panel that we can use? Um, things like that. While the upfront expenses may seem steep at first, there are a number of incentives to help defray the costs. There are the solar renewable energy certificates. There are also rebates available. There's an income tax credit that's available. There's a sales tax exemption that's available. And there's a 30% federal uh, tax credit available. So the state, I think, has a big piece of this. And I think that allows the vendors then to really have something more to sell and bring down the cost Absolutely. of the, the total cost and the payback period. Uh, Massachusetts has a portfolio standard that all the utilities need to make so they, they have to get a certain percentage of their power from solar power and, and what the utilities do will they'll buy your SREX as a way to count uh, your renewable production in their portfolio and help you fund your project. The solar certificates um, was something that we didn't even know about and they're called solar rex and apparently for every thousand kilowatts that you generate with your system, you are issued a certificate. Uh, as long as I'm producing electricity by these solar panels, um, I'll be entitled to solar X, and those solar X are selling at a pretty good rate right now. Yeah, there are two models. One is the lease model, and one is the direct ownership model. The leasing model is very attractive, especially for those homeowners or uh, system owners that don't have the upfront capital 
uh, to put down to purchase the system. So you always know for the next 20 years or the life of the lease contract what your price for your electricity is going to be, which is different than right now if you're with the utility. It could fluctuate depending on a number of variables. Uh, and there is uh, no cost generally to the owner of the system up front. Solar panels can not only power your home, but the excess electricity can actually be sold back to the utility company. We um, typically have a bill of somewhere in the vicinity of uh, about $140 a month. Right now, we're looking at the average being somewhere around $35 to $45. The second part is um, that we have the ability to um, net meter our electricity back to NSTAR. And so that's, that's a Positive. So if we're producing more electricity during the daytime um, than we're using, then I'm net metering back to NSTAR and, and at the same exact rate, retail rate, that they're charging me for electricity for the uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, we haven't had an electrical bill since they turned it on. Um, we've generated about 6,200 kilowatt hours as of today, and we've sent 3,200 of them back to the grid. So we've only used net of 3,000 kilowatt hours so far. Of course, not every home is a perfect fit for solar power. But for those that are, is it worth it? I, I wish we'd done this 10 years ago if I'd known it, it was going to pay off like it did. Um, we just didn't know, you know, when you don't know and you're investigating and you're waiting for a time to have everything catch on. Um, we're extremely happy. I wish we had a bigger roof. Once you put it in and you see how it works, I think you become more passionate about it. And once you realize that the state is behind it as well, yeah, and and uh, the federal government actually is, is also behind it because I also get a federal tax credit, right? Uh, now, which it's, is sizable. It's it's interesting because we're in Florida part of the year, and they have no incentives. I think one of one important thing to note is that um, solar PV is both from a energy a diversity perspective and from a uh, environmental perspective, a very positive type of uh, renewable energy generation that is not just available to businesses uh, and governments, but also to residents. And we're excited here in Massachusetts to see the solar PV market really growing and there being a lot of opportunity across all sectors to take advantage of it. Whenever we install a solar panel, that piece of equipment is going to be generating clean electricity for at least 25 years. And so, maybe even long after I'm gone, this equipment that we're installing today is going to be doing good for everyone. And, uh, er you know, every once in a while we have to kind of stop and remind ourselves that uh, we're in the business of doing things, not just for today, but for the next generation. And that, that is exciting. <laughs>